it was wonderful to hear one of our previous speakers mention scapegoats. Now we all know what scapegoating is. You blame someone else for your troubles, you victimise someone or something and hopefully get rid of it and so get things your own way and get a bit of peace for a while. Individuals do it, groups large and small do it, even nations do it. Scapegoating is a very old practice and is found in all societies, ancient and modern. It is the stuff of literature. Australia is conducting a major scapegoating episode by locking asylum seekers up, refusing them entry, pushing them off to other countries. We are making them victims sacrificed on the altar of a narrow interpretation of national security or border sovereignty. But the trouble with scapegoating is that its cover has been blown. It just doesn't work anymore because it is increasingly obvious that victims are innocent. Most people worldwide can recognise the self-serving trickery of setting up scapegoats. Since it was realised that the quintessential victim, Jesus, was innocent, the world has been growing in a slow and gradual consciousness of the inherent innocence of all victims. The people now on Manus Island and Nauru are the victims of Australia. It's no use just talking about government when we know that the political parties that we elect to govern are the ones who are rivals for the easy, voter-friendly solution. We keep voting these people in. In fact, the majority of Australians agree with the current hardline stand, as the last speaker said. I know. There have to be other ways of dealing with the problems of people smugglers, deaths at sea, relationships in the region. It doesn't matter to me, and I'm sure to you, how hard it is for government to deal with the asylum seeker problem. It doesn't matter how huge the problems are. That's life. Life is difficult. What does matter is that innocent human beings are being locked up for indeterminate periods of time as a deterrent to others and that we put the onus on them to solve the problem by returning to the danger from which they escaped. This cannot be allowed to continue. It is simply morally wrong to do this, to victimise the innocent, to treat persons who claim to be in fear for their safety as criminals. It is morally wrong no matter how successful it is. Australia's victimising of asylum seekers is reducing us as a people. We are rank hypocrites. We treat these people as criminals, whereas they have broken no laws, while all the time we are the ones who thumb our nose at the Refugee Convention and thumb our nose at basic human decency. We in Australia should be acutely aware that it is possible for any person, group, church or nation to stray from its basic principles and moral foundations. Our nation's structures are built on the Judeo-Christian ethic of the fundamental dignity of human beings. It has often been breached, but it remains basic to our structures. It is being attacked by the severity with which asylum seekers are treated, and it is being eroded by the refusal of Australia to abide by international agreements. So on the one hand, we have the fact of the gradual awakening of humanity to the innocence of victims. And on the other, we have Australia actually using people who have committed no crimes as victims. The only way these two opposites can be held together is by a process of self-deception, simple deceit by pretending that it is right to imprison the innocent, that locking up children is necessary for a greater good, to trumpet the saving of people from drowning as the reason when everybody knows that that's only a byproduct. Stupidly, we then imagine that by some miracle, our character as a fair-minded and generous people will not be affected by the cruel, underhanded violence we are inflicting on the weak and vulnerable other. We need to be very careful about what our behaviour is doing to our identity. 
You and I, friends, are part of the conscience of Australia. We must continue to stand and speak for these people who've done no wrong. We must think, read and teach. We must respond with ingenuity and courage to Australian governments and their media drivers. We must not lose heart. However, the worst thing we can do is to perpetuate the cycle of victimisation. That means we cannot afford to make the same errors politicians make by turning around and victimising them. Don't victimise the victimisers. Otherwise, we reduce the situation to one of feeding an endless cycle of pathetic point scoring. We must engage with decision makers and opponents in season and out of season, in civilised and respectful terms. There are good people in government on all political sides. What we must do is focus on the facts, on humanity, on truth, on transparency and goodness. That sort of strength is a match for the deepest moral darkness and can pierce the thickest of parliamentary hot air. The asylum seeker question is fundamentally not about borders, security, media powers, the next election or political trickery. It's about human beings, the rights of people everywhere to seek safety and human dignity including ours. It's about our human obligation and capacity to put ourselves in other people's shoes. And as Pope Francis has said, to be able to weep. We weep for asylum seekers and we weep for Australia and what it risks becoming.